That's me. I'm my name's Nathan Otier. I'll be speaking about something I've been thinking about. Uh, it might be a bit wishy-washy, but I would like to sort of present a hypothesis and sort of thoughts that I've been having around efficiency and robustness within the context of software development, but more maybe within the context of uh, economics and national markets and some of that. So this is my journey to work in the morning. I have to go to work at 9.30. I have to walk to the tube, take the tube, walk to the train station, take the train, and walk again. And depending on when, at what time I actually leave the house, I might arrive at different times at work. And this is basically the problem with the, there's a train journey that takes about 50 minutes. And the train only, go, the train only goes about 50 minutes. And depending on what time I leave, I might get to work on time or not. And if I leave at 8.34 or 8.33, then I'm sort of sure I'll be at work at 9.30 in the ideal case. But um, in the real world, the ideal case almost never happens. So we have this kind of uh, trade-off between efficiency and robustness. So if I define efficiency in terms of more efficient is I don't actually wait on the platform and do nothing. Um, compared to robustness is if something like goes wrong, then I'll still be work, work on time. And the more efficient my journey becomes, the less robust it becomes. So if I decide to step out of the door at the last minute, then I might not get to work. So I believe that there's some kind of trade-off between robustness and efficiency. And it might look something like this. I have no scientific data for it. Um, but the more you want to spend on it, the more towards this area can, you can go and you can be inefficient and unrobust. But if you want to be efficient, you can become more efficient, but then you have to start choosing between uh, the trade between the red pool and the blue pool, which is efficiency or robustness. So you have to start choosing um, as your system becomes more and more efficient. So how does this apply to financial markets? Next slide. Uh, capitalism and financial markets. Um, a lot of people involved in economics and capitalism are about the, all about the efficiency of the markets, and efficiency of the resource allocation. And uh, Frederick Hayek is about says that uh, free markets is the most effective way that we can allocate resources. So there's like this word efficiency uh, that everyone talks about. Um, traders are now spending three hundred million dollars on a new undersea cable between New York and Atlanta, uh, New York and uh, London because they want to shave off six milliseconds of their trading time between the high frequency trading system. So there's this real drive towards efficiency. We want to make some things more efficient and more efficient, but are we not sacrificing some robustness in the process? Um, some people think that we have less stable markets now because of fiat currencies and people saying, oh, we should go back to the gold standard. Um, we shouldn't be allowing governments to issue so much money, printing money, etc. But does not mean that because our financial markets have become more efficient that we've lost some robustness in the process. Um, and if we have these volatile times, does it not mean we have to start thinking about making our markets maybe a little bit less efficient, but gain some robustness? I don't know. How does this apply to software engineering? Well, there, there are parallels in software engineering, um, because this trade-off between robustness and efficiency is almost ever in the world. And before I go into that, um, Efficient market hypothesis is another thing that the economists talk about. The efficient, market, efficient market hypothesis is like the holy grail for economists, and they think it's like this, this great thing. Uh, but no one ever talks about what do we sacrifice when you have these massively efficient markets. So banks are extremely efficient um, with their money, but it's a unicorn. So we're chasing this unicorn, unicorn of efficient markets, and um, no one's talking about what we might actually be losing in the process. Um, so I think markets have become more efficient over the last how many ever decades, but yeah, they've of course become a lot more volatile. Uh, what the reason for that is, I think there are lots of reasons, it's hard to say. So, software engineering. We have the same kind of ideology in software engineering, so us, we as software developers can't say that bankers are idiots and we know what we're doing. In software engineering, we also chase efficiency. Like Darren's talking about the cheetah, people are saying we have to go faster, we have to, our language has to be faster, people compare their languages because my job as well as your job. Um, and waterfall, luckily for us, we don't really follow that anymore, mostly. Um, but no one ever said waterfall was inefficient. As a result of it might be too efficient, maybe it was not robust enough for change. So waterfall doesn't respond well to change, we know that. <coughs> um, and just as EMH or the efficient market hypothesis in markets is the unicorn of economics, Waterfall used to be the, the unicorn of software engineering. It was this ideal that we try to get to, and we were frustrated when we were trying to search and we couldn't find it. So, searching the forest and the waterfall is supposed to work, but 
in reality um, it wasn't achievable. So what does that mean? We have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice efficiency to be more robust. Um, and I think it's fine, but we should start being honest about it and say that ag agility or agile process is more robust, and we know that. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that we have to sacrifice a little bit of efficiency. And again, like the simplest thing first, I think one of the problems that people have with doing the simplest thing first is that they have this intuitive kind of disconnect between the thing that if I do the simplest thing first, then I'm going to have to rewrite this next week of the iteration. And I think we should say. It's okay because we don't mind being a little bit less efficient <coughs> if we want to have robustness. How does this fit in with lean? I don't know because I don't know not enough about lean. But lean seems to me to be all about eliminating waste and being more efficient. And I worry about lean is that we will lose some of the robustness that we've gained with agility and um, to be more efficient. And I'm not sure um, exactly where that fits in with my hypothesis. So um, losing some efficiency is not a sin. This is the Garden of Eden. Um, it's okay to lose some efficiency uh, as long as we know where we are in our uh, trade-off landscape and if we sacrifice some for getting some robustness and um, it would be useful to start protecting ourselves um, against errors and using frameworks and languages and things that have more robust architectures um, and stop chasing after efficiency and having the most efficient code with the most readable code and start thinking about what happens in our system actually if something goes wrong. That's it. Thank you.